QuickBooks Pro Plus Desktop 2022 Bank Feeds. Get ready because we bookkeeping pros are moving up the hilltop with QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2022. Here we are on our desktop in prior presentations. We got the QuickBooks software up and running, indicated by the icon on the desktop. You might be asking at this point in time, are you going to open the software each presentation? We will not, but we do want to practice it on the first few presentations to get an idea of how to open it and where the data file will be located. So we got the QuickBooks program on the left. You'll recall that we then set up the sample file and we stored that data file here. The data file looks like this. Software file looks like this. Typically, people will then open up the program first, similar to opening up something like Microsoft Office, Microsoft Word, and then the program or the data file, similar to a Word document, in this case, the data file will open up automatically, usually not so this time, given the fact that we're using the sample file and therefore going to this default screen. We're then going to open from here the last file that we had open up on top by selecting that item in green and either opening or simply double clicking on it. It's reminding me, us that we have a desktop version of the file. We're going to say OK on that and then we're going to get into our sample file we got the name up top for the sample rock castle construction note that it has the same windows open that we had last time but they're not maximized what i'm going to do is close them out by selecting the x not the x up top that'll close the program but everything in the x in our display window within the program closing these items up just so we can see that gray display window then I'm going to open up what I want in this window. That's going to be the company file drop down and the home page. We would like to see it. It first opens up without being maximized. So then we could maximize it by selecting this icon. I would also like to see the open windows on this tab. To do that, I go to the view drop down open windows tab. Now we've got our home page as the only open window in our display format in this middle portion. I'd like to open up the major two reports, the financial statement reports, that being the balance sheet and the income statement so that we can then discuss the bank feeds. So to do that, we're going to go to the reports drop down up top, company financial, going to go on down to the balance sheet first, which is just what I typically will do. There we have it, the date range at the 12, 15, 23 or the date point. And then we'll open up the income statement by going to the reports drop down and then we'll go down to the company and financial and look at the profit and loss report. I'm going to set a beginning date here at the beginning of the year, January 010123. It's setting the data information at uh, 2023. So I'm going to keep with that and then I'll refresh it here. So there's going to be our data. Now we have three things open, homepage, balance sheet, and the profit and loss. This will be the standard routine we'll, we will do oftentimes every time in essence i'm working in practice and or in this demonstration type of format then i'm going to go to the home page and just want to look at now the bank feed so you might be asking and because quickbooks often advertises kind of this way many people type tend to think that well i've got quickbooks i want to make the books really quickly what i'd like to do is get the quickbooks system and then i'd like to connect it to my bank and then get the bank feeds to come in from the bank and then everything's just going to populate automatically making the reports and, and the world's going to be a perfect, nice and easy place. And in some cases, you can kind of do that to some degree. But in many cases, you're going to have some deviations to be able to just take this, the information straight from the bank feeds. So we will focus in on bank feeds at the end of the course. And if you want to jump there and jump to the bank feeds, you could go there first and then jump right into basically connecting the bank and trying to download the data. However, I don't recommend doing that because if you don't have an idea of the QuickBooks system, then you're still going to run into problems because let me just give a quick recap of what the bank feeds does and its pros and cons with relation to it. So you can't connect to the bank feeds. It's a little bit different in the look and feel to the online QuickBooks system, but you can connect to it. We have an example here within this example file. So you could go to the banking dropdown, you go to the bank feed center, and then you could take a look at the bank feed center. And you've got some examples of institutions that have been connected to within it. 
Now, once you connect to the bank, however, you're going to have transactions that have been uploaded and you can look at the transaction list. And so now they've been pulled in from the bank, but they have not yet been added to the data file that's being used in order to create the financial statements. This is what I call bank feed limbo at this point in time, meaning you've connected successfully, you've connected to the bank but the bank doesn't provide you enough information for QuickBooks to take that information and then put it into your QuickBooks system. Why not? Because if you think about it, the only information the bank has is the date that the transaction took place and basically the amount and whether it's a deposit or a check. It might have some more information than that if they are electronic transfers, such as, as you could see here with the information on it, which could give you possibly the vendor or the customer. And that will depend on the type of transaction as to the amount of data. That amount of information, however, is not enough necessarily to determine whether it should be an expense account or whether it should be decreasing an asset account if you're paying off a loan versus an expense, if it's a customer that you're receiving money from. And it also is not gonna help you determine if you're using some kind of accrual process. So that's the one thing that you, that you want to basically keep in mind. And then if I go back to the home page over here, and I'm going to maximize this screen, the other thing you want to keep in mind is that your accounting system might have accrual components in it. And if you need accrual components in it, that's going to complicate the way your bank feeds will work. Meaning if you just pull in the data from the bank and try to use that as easily as possible to construct your financial statements, you can. And the closer you are to a cash-based system, the more likely you'll be able to do that, although you will lose some of the, the depth in terms of the types of data that you could, you could drill down on within the system, depending on, on the decisions that you will make. But a lot of companies might need some accrual components too, which will complicate the system. So if you're thinking about doing the bank feeds, I would recommend you at least look through the first couple presentations, first few sections where we look at each of these cycles, the vendor cycle, the customer cycle, and the employees cycle, and try to determine what your accounting system will look like, what you need in it in terms of a cash basis versus an accrual basis. After that, then possibly jump on down to where the bank feeds are at. And if you, if you really want to dive right into that and go there, what we're gonna do in this course is first work through the practice problems without the bank feeds because that really focus that allows us then to focus in on the normal accrual accounting system the flows and looking at the forms the impact of the forms on the financial statements then when we do get to the bank feeds we'll think about how the the bank feeds can fit into different different components whether we're on a cash basis or an accrual basis and we'll then be able to apply our knowledge of what these forms are actually doing to be able to use that knowledge in order to process the information from the bank feed into the accounting system so it can be used properly to create the income statement and the balance sheet. Therefore, we're not gonna be diving into the bank feeds for most of the course, but we will have a substantial section after we have basically gone over the accounting rules that you can then jump into the bank feeds you may want to jump into the bank feeds sooner than that so i would recommend that you take a look at basically the flows here first and then possibly dive down or jump on down to the bank feeds if you so choose so a quick recap that on where you might need more inf information on the bank feeds if i look at the vendor section that's where the money's going out typically we're paying for stuff there's two ways we could do that. If I'm paying for stuff, I might do it all with electronic transfers. In that case, I, I have basically all check forms, all decreases to the bank, and I don't have to enter bills. If that's the case, then I'm more likely to be, be e more easily lining up to a bank feed type of system where it's a more of a cash-based type of system. And the bank feeds, if they're all electronic transfers that are going out, are more likely to have the detail on them to help me to construct my, my books from simply the bank, such as having the vendor information and so on. However, if you like to enter the bill, you have a system where you want to enter the bills first and track your payables, deciding then when you actually want to pay the payables, now you've introduced an accrual kind of component and you'll have to then, then have the bill that will be in place and then pay the bill, which means when the money goes out on the bank feed you're gonna to have to match it in some way 
to an accounts payable. It's, you've, you've now moved away from an accrual, completely accrual system that complicates the bank feeds possibly to some degree. Also, if you have inventory, your decision will then be, do I want to track inventory within QuickBooks or do I want to track inventory outside of QuickBooks in some kind of way? If you do not have inventory, that then also makes it easier. You're more likely to line up to a cash basis system. It might then be easier to just dive into the to the bank feeds and try to construct your books basically from the banking information. But if you have inventory, we'll talk more about that as we go. The, your question is, how am I going to track the inventory? Do I want to do it within QuickBooks? Do I want to do it outside of QuickBooks and just summarize the data within QuickBooks? How is that going to feed into basically my accounting system? Because when you record the inventory and you buy it, it's on the books as an asset. You have now deviated, in essence, from a full uh, a cash basis system, complicating things a bit. And then if you go to the customer side, when you sell stuff, if you sell stuff just for cash, for example, and you say, I'm just going to get cash or I have a service business, which is online where I'm a gig worker or something like that. And I just get paid from these online platforms and they just pay me when I get money, it's income. Well, then if that's the case, it might be easier to line up to the bank feeds because you're going to get the incomes with with electronic transfers in that case. And those electronic transfers might have the customer name, which gives you that added detail that also makes it easier to see who paid you. And you might be able to basically construct your books uh, in that case on the revenue side of things. However, if you're in a situation where you do work such as a bookkeeper or, or law firm or construction company and you bill people, and you have to send them an invoice and expect to collect in the future, now you've deviated from a cash basis. You have a, an accrual component. You've got a track and a receivable. And typically that's done in QuickBooks. And oftentimes that's one of the big components, depending on the type of industry you're in, where people deviate from a cash basis and they have that need then to track the receivables and send out these invoices. And so that'll complicate kind of the cash basis. You want to think about how the, this process is going to work for you. And then you and then you can see how the bank feeds will fit into it because then you have to receive the payment and deposit the payment. Or uh, you might have a, a situation where you get paid at the same time, like at a cash register, but you still want to, you know, collect the cash at that point in time and then deposit it. And there's going to be a difference between the cash you're collecting on a per sale unit you collect all the cash for the day, for example, and then you're going to clump them together and deposit them into the bank as one lump sum. In that situation, the lump sum that goes into the bank is not going to be able to tell you who paid you in that case because it's the bank's just going to see it as one lump sum. So you got to think about how it's going to show up on the bank side of things as a deposit and how much detail you want on your books and are willing to accept with regards to who paid you and so on in that system. And then on the employee side of things, just obviously payroll in, in and of itself will complicate the, the system as well because you're going to have the pay dates that you will have. You might pay them after the payroll period. So if you're running payroll within QuickBooks, then that could complicate the system. You might have a payroll outside of QuickBooks that you're using as well. And you can you need to then think about payroll if you have payroll and determine how that's going to fit in and how that will fit into the bank feed system too. You might possibly even have a separate account basically for the payroll. So that's just a quick overcap. Uh, and so just remember, a lot of people get QuickBooks, they just they just connect to the bank and then they and then they get an overwhelming amount of data that they don't know how to how to process from the bank feed limbo to actually make the financial statements. And if you don't get that set up from the start, then you're going to have to fix it at some point in the future, which is more difficult than setting it up properly from the start oftentimes. So think through it when, when you're starting out would be my recommendation.